Today I want to talk about the idea of the freedom of association in America from the founding era to today. It's an interesting question because the freedom of association isn't actually in the Constitution. Nowhere will you find that phrase. But we do have, as the Supreme Court has even decided since 1958 anyway, in the famous case of NAACP versus Alabama, a freedom of association that rests in the First Amendment, our freedom of speech, our freedom of assembly. Even long before that, long before 1958, Americans knew that association, joining together with other like-minded people to accomplish a particular goal or just to spend time together, just to communicate with one another, was a defining characteristic of what made this nation different and what made its democracy work. We were, Arthur Schlesinger, a famous historian once said, a nation of joiners. Go back another century to the 1830s, Alexis de Tocqueville, a French traveler, famously saw Americans as forever forming associations. He was amazed that Americans of all sorts were forming clubs and societies and organizations to accomplish anything and everything. But there's always been an uneasiness with this idea of association, of people coming together to accomplish particular goals. All the way back into George Washington's time, Americans, while they accept the fact that they're constantly forming associations, have a certain uneasiness and anxiety about it. The reason is this. In a republic, there ought to be a singular public good that we're all pursuing, the good of the commonwealth. In fact, the word republic comes from the Latin phrase res publica, public things. And so the idea of a singular public good is a really powerful ideal that particularly uh, weighed heavily in the founding era. And so George Washington, as the first president of the United States, through the entirety of the 1790s, had an anxiety and an uneasiness with what he called self-created societies. What he was talking about in specific were democratic and republican societies, political groups that were forming beginning in about 1794, 1795 in cities and rural communities across the country for a particular goal, and that was to advocate for a particular kind of democracy, an active, energetic democracy where the people at the grassroots level were deeply involved and constantly making their voice heard. But for George Washington, these were unelected bodies, and he didn't have much comfort with the idea that these unelected groups could be speaking for the people. He was unsure that that, that, that wasn't in fact anti-democratic or dangerous to the republic. So he saw this idea of advocating for a particular narrow political goal, like the Democratic and Republican societies were doing, as something dangerous, as something that might in fact endanger the common good. At the same time, though, it's easy to see in George Washington a joiner in his own right. He was a member of the Masonic fraternity, for instance, a Freemason from the 1750s until his death in 1799. He too could see that joining together with like-minded people for fraternity, for communication, to pursue uh, particular uh, goals and making the, the society a better place to live through philanthropy and charity, that those too could be very positive goods. So there's always been an uneasiness, a, a sort of duality in how Americans have felt about associations. They're positive and good on one hand, and potentially dangerous and potentially anxiety producing on another. Over time though, Americans have come to embrace and to love the fact that we have a diverse and pluralistic civil society with different associations pursuing all kinds of different goals in all kinds of different ways. Americans have come to accept, embrace, even love something that if you go back to George Washington's time, they were still trying to figure out how they felt about it. George Washington had this anxiety about the role of these groups in society, and many in his generation did. But we have already learned, we've come to learn that in fact these organizations are also what make democracy function. That these associations, this freedom of association, is something that can strengthen our democracy, not weaken it.